we can get started. Um, well, first off, the meeting come to order. It's being recorded. And I'll do the attendance. So we've got Norm. Here. Mike Coombs. Here. Malcolm DeBay. Here. Mike DeBay. Here. Uh, Deb. Here. Eric is not here yet. Um, and Dick Granels is here. And we have, that's you, Carol Ann, yes? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. Trying to capture guests. All righty. Well, we can get started. Well, yes. here comes Michelle Pratt. And hopefully Eric shows up shortly. Well, we can get started reading the minutes. Or we wait, wait for Eric. Any comments, questions, changes? The I've read them already, Dick. I don't have this mic to bay. I don't have any questions on them. And I make a motion that if everybody's had a chance to read them at home, we accept them as okay. written. Okay. Well, I, I we do have a problem on the Kong Kong update. It says no okay, meeting. Me. It says no meeting since the last. And I don't know what that's supposed to be. But uh, since the last LMP last meeting. meeting. Yeah. Okay. Right, I'll, I'll just since last LMC meeting. And then I would say, however, comma, the 141 Congamon Road owner. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll fix that. Anything? Uh, we have Rip Banish on. And anything, anybody else? Okay, I've got those corrections. So Mike, subject to the corrections made by Norm, is that still good? Oh yeah. Okay, a second, somebody? I'll second. Deb, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain, all right, I've got to go down roll call. Norm? Aye. Mike Coombs. Aye. Malcolm DeBay. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick Grannell's aye. Uh, Deb Harris. Aye. And that's it. Er Eric's not on here yet. Okay, so affirmed. Okay. Um, public comment. Anybody in the public? Any comments? You have to, uh, you have to unmute Carolyn. If <laughs> down in the should be down in the bottom left hand corner of your video. Oh, there. Am I on now? Yep. Yeah, you're on. We lost yep. your. There we go. Uh, okay. Now we got you. Sorry about that. I I had to do it on my phone. My laptop gave out on me. <laughs> um, I wanted to mention, um, Tony. My um, significant other goes down to the south boat ramp and he mows and weed wax um, of his own volition. Um, and he's just appalled at how many cigarette butts are in the shoreline down there, whether it be where the stone wall is or the rock wall and natural area to the right when you pull in. Is there any way we can get signage down there that says your cigarette butts are not biodegradable? I don't know. Because I don't think a lot of people associate cigarette butts with trash. No, the, we're kind of losing you. I'm going to take my video off just to see if that'll help. Okay, try again. Did Maybe you, you want to take your video off too. Because it's... Want to try again, Caroline? I'm trying. Yeah. Okay, um, what I was going to say is my significant other, Tony Cassell, 
um, goes down to the boat ramp and on Berkshire Avenue and he mows and weed wax and makes it look really nice down there, he does edging and stuff. And he's noticing more and more, there's a lot of cigarette butts along the shoreline on the wall side and on to the right when you pull in. And the problem is, is bi they're not biodegradable. And I think a lot of people, when they think of trash, they don't think of cigarette butts. Um, unfortunately, I'm a smoker, but I don't do that sort of thing. And I'm thinking maybe some signage that says cigarette butts are not biodegradable. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can. There's a there's a the pile of trash. Just to kind of expand on that, we are going to talk about it later. But uh, the the pile of trash that we see in the lake at the water's edge. Um, on the grounds of both ramps, and even now with the uh, North pa North Pond Preserve Area, and the same thing we hear about it at the South Pond, the southern South, be the southeastern corner of South Pond. We hear about the same thing from those people that the the woods, the the waterfront, everything is just loaded with trash, and I doubt that. <laughs> One out of every 50 pounds is biodegradable. Uh, people just, they just dump everything everywhere. I mean, you'd have to have a listing of what's not biodegradable or what is, and I'm not sure which would be a bigger list. Yeah, well, I don't people know. Just I, slop. I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it is all. Yeah. So I oh. thought I would mention it. Okay. Thank Any, you. Anything else in public comment? No, no, sir. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else though? All right. Um, I'm just making a couple notes here and non-biodegradable. I'd be rich if I could cash in on all the nip bottles I pick up. Oh my God. I yeah. They're starting to rival cigarette butts. Okay, moving on. Um, CONCOM update, Norm? Yes, two items to report, uh, one short one and one longer one. The short one uh, was has to do with the uh, request by uh, the owner of 141 Congamon to amend the order of conditions so he does not have to remove the docks. Uh, uh, he asked to dismiss without prejudice and revisit this in the future. Okay. So we may come back later. We'll have to wait and see. The second item of which there's been a lot of uh, stuff on already, and Carol Ann is on, on board here too, and that is a problem at 10-12 uh, Island Pond and, and the um, association area. That's actually on the that's actually on the agenda. So if you want to, do you want to fill this in then with well, all the details, or do you want to do it? Let's do it now, and then Carol Ann can leave if she wants. Okay. Okay. Because it is part of this. That's why it's here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what's different this time? We we we've had uh, this dock as a problem before. Is for the first time we actually have an actual survey that uh, the, that the Congamon Heights paid for, and the black he heavy line. Oh, hang on a second. I need to uh, screen share, Karen. Okay, hold on. Go ahead. Okay, can you see this picture? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So this black heavy line here, that is the uh, property line. Okay. To the north of that is a fence that's owned by 10 and 12 Island Pond Road. And that's obviously on their property. And it's five feet at this end of the property. And it's uh, one foot on this end of the property. Here is the canal. And over here is the island, okay? The shed is also partially 1.2 feet onto their, onto their property. Now, the problem is with the dock, okay? The dock is actually one foot onto 10 and 12 property, uh, property 
on at the shoreline. But if you follow the the property line extended, and that's this red dotted line that I put on. Yeah. They're actually at this end of the dock, they're they're on Congamon property by eight feet. Okay. Now, what the Conservation Commission has asked of us, and I know we got a lot of other opinions that we may want to express, but the question at hand is if they have this dock if they tell a, a property owner to either move or rotate the dock towards the canal do we have as lmc have any issues with possibility of problems with the canal now right now the canal is not passable because there's a tree down across it so even a kayak can't get through now but somebody might take that tree out and uh so that's the question we have, uh, but there's been a lot of emails going around. There's also right here an illegal seawall that was put in that Conservation Commission will probably ask them to remove that. So to so let's first address just the, the question at hand. Do we have any issues if this dock is rotated towards this way? Now, one other thing I wanted to mention is they have two they have two boats the pontoon boat has always been on the north side and the congamana heights is asked to move it onto this side to lower the interference now if you saw in dick's package uh one of the overhead camera shots the distance between the first congamana heights boat and the pontoon boat in a prior year was not very wide so it's, a, it's definitely an interference problem that needs to be finally fixed so to the question of is there an issue do we have any issues with rotating this dock or moving this dock southerly well, like, norm this is mike devay yes, i have a question for you just to serve for clarification obviously rotating the dock to get it in line with the property lines extension is what the lms what the lpp says is supposed to happen or to make it legal stay on your own side yeah if they do that is it going to block the canal more it doesn't look like it's big enough to block the canal when i went by today and looked at it i didn't walk down there because it wasn't clear enough out of dick's email whether i could last time i was walking down on somebody's dock to look at things i got into a right <laughs> trespassing thing here you know and i didn't want to cause another problem yeah if you stay on because we have permission to go on the beach uh carol ann was on and she said she would take anybody, but we, you know, you can go down on the beach, but we, you can't go down on the dock. The, yeah, uh, I, I wanted to do it before the meeting. I, it wasn't clear in the email the, who to call and stuff like that. So anyway, you can, Norm, based on your- If I could speak in for a moment, you can contact me and I'm more than happy to meet anyone down there and you can view everything from our side of the fence as well as our docks. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. Carol Ann is the president of Congamon Heights Association. Right. Okay. Okay. And they, the other thing about it, uh, we got to keep in mind that the LPP has, there's a couple issues here. It's not 25 feet. There's plenty of shoreline there. Uh, it would necessitate a variance to, to have something violate the 25 feet. It also, um, the rotating it, may still i don't know why that t is on the well it looks like an l but i mean what purpose that serves and that's has a, that adds oh, to the problem that holds a bench at the end of the dock for sitting on okay um, and that dock is the one that goes with the uh, lot 10 and 12 right yes. correct what yeah. the problem okay. is is we had permission to be 15 feet off of our property line which clearly is in debate here but if you were even just to go from the fence line we're in 23 to 26 feet on that side because and we're being prohibited our members of, the, of enjoying the beach and safely navigating we do have kayakers and canoers and it's it's not a very good situation um even when they put their pontoon boat on the other side they still have a ski boat and a jet ski or two if they could just move over where they used to be, which was much closer to the tree, they had said in the past 
that there was no more room, but I had also brought to the Conservation Commission meeting the pictures of the shoreline, and there's certainly enough room, maybe not a 40-foot dock, but I would think 20 or 25-foot dock would be more than enough to accommodate a pontoon boat and yeah. the ski boat, because the ski boat used to always be to the southern side. Because we just want to be able to navigate safely without being inhibited. And we always stay far enough away from our boundaries with at least 15 feet. Other people can enjoy their pontoon boats. So we just want the same consideration that we're giving. Okay. Uh, I know that back uh, when Mark Kronicki was chief, this had surfaced then and, and he had basically said uh you you either move it or it will come out and it won't go back <laughs> uh, there's also uh chief la bombard uh way back in the day gave him a letter saying wherever he puts his dock is basically just fine so he went from there and just pressed onward and he has since passed his children now have um inherited the house so it, it's just it's a very tiring thing. I've been at it for over three years. I finally have the survey to substantiate what we've been saying. Our attorney has sent a letter and I'm just looking for some help to be able to enjoy our beach for our members and the, our docking. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the only question I had, it was back to the original one. If the dock, the L-shaped dock is rotated, make up for that eight feet. Are we creating a problem of blocking the canal? Did anybody get a close enough to look to figure that out? Norm, I'm looking at you. I, I, I don't see any issues the, except for possibly the depth of the water because uh, it's pretty it's pretty shallow in that canal. They may have trouble docking their boat, but that is not our problem here. No, no. That's, that's the homeowner problem. And, and, and and Norm, really, this is Mike Coombs. Um, what about the map they submitted for where their dock is? Is that is that on file hmm. with the Conservation Commission? Uh, Ours. I, I don't know that. They, they need to have a map showing where their dock is to get a permit. Good point. Has that been done? Uh, I don't think they, I don't think they have a permit yet. Yeah. Well, no that that should have been on file for years. Exactly. Yes, okay. it should. Um, well, I know they have. I know there's a, a a file. We'll say um, at Conservation Commission um, because there's been issues in the past, and they've asked them to abide by the rules. And I don't know that they have been. To tell you the truth, I don't know. Has this dock always been right on the line? No. 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 And when did they move it? Last year, they sent you guys, a, I'm going to say two years ago, they sent you all a letter last year uh, or whatever, and they filled out their application. They got their dock spot uh, uh, and their permit for their dock. And it just seems it's moving over more and more. And they also built the seawall and that pushed it over a little more. Now it's even angled and it, it's just a progressive thing. So it can't be there, Dick. I mean, ridiculous. Right. They have to get th this is ridiculous. I'd right. like this consideration, and I'd like 15 feet off the boundary. Yeah, right. I mean, e even with the 15, they should be coming in for a variance, but because they have probably, I'm guessing, 100, 100 125 feet of shoreline there, and actually, yes. two lots are one. You know, uh, they own both that one and the next one down on right. your on your ten, picture. Right, ten Correct. and twelve. Yeah, I, I think we've got to do a little more investigation, but they certainly what they're doing right now is, is does not work is would not be allowed even under LPP. And they'd never, by the way, they would never be able to get a Chapter 91 license for the same reason. Right. Because DEP is a stickler on that. Yeah. OK. Let so you all know you my phone number now. If you'd like to call me and arrange to meet down there, I'm you happy might want to not anything. do it over. You might not want to do that over the video. I can, okay, I can I'll pass send it on, it. Caroline. If it's okay with you, I'll pass it to them. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. So, okay. Thanks. There's no question in my thanks mind so much. that 
Yep. No question in my mind that uh, I believe Conservation Commission will act on this and have them move that dock. Good. Okay. The seawall will be taken out. Thank uh, you that, so much. That was illegally put in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So to the question now, uh, uh, now, Jean, Jean's time in the office has been very limited. So getting her to do some research is, is a little bit slow, a lot slower than normal. Uh, but uh, we'll, check, we'll check on uh, what the original dock layout was and how much it's different today. Uh, and I'll try to get that for the next conservation meeting. And even uh, if... Okay. Even if it is, uh, if they're sneaking over from their drawing is a good thing to know too. You know, what yep. does they, what did their drawing say and did they provide a new one uh, with this year's if they moved it? Right. I'm, I'm sure they didn't supply a new one, but, uh, but uh, to the question of, uh, do we believe it would be a problem if that dock is moved southerly? Uh, I don't see any problems other than the possibility of docking the boat, but that's that's that's, that's their a problem. problem of the homeowner. Yeah. Okay. It helps the situation, makes things better if they tuck it down to below where the word dock is on there, where it says existing dock. If they just yeah. plop that sucker down in there, it'd be much better off. Yeah. Okay. For a point of reference with conservation, I submit the docking plans um, on the, the graphs that you have us fill out. I submit those every year with our permitting paperwork because we have markers on our beach and we don't move the placement of the docks. So you can see I'm 23 feet from the line. Um, I ducked it on my map. So I'm actually 24 feet from the line now. If I could be 15 <laughs> feet off, and they could be 15 feet off. I, I think that would be very manageable. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. So thank you so much. All right. So uh, so I think I hear that nobody believes there's a problem moving that dock. Is that correct? Correct. I don't think there's a problem, Norm. I just want to make sure we're not creating a new one. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and it should be the length that is to support. The minimal, the minimal length to support docking, not yeah. and and having a place to sit out on the end, if it's interfering with stuff, that probably has to come off. That's I, I would yeah. view that as that's you know belt and suspend extra ex, it's bells and whistles, fancy stuff on the end, which is not supporting what uh, DEP says the yeah. docks are are supposed to do. Okay. So that is the CONCOM update. Super. Well, I'm feeling relieved. This has been three years in the making. So yes. well, thank you all very, very much. Well, Carol, uh, Carol, uh, Carol Ann realized that uh, we just give yeah. recommendations yeah. back to uh, conservation. It's their decision on the actual moving right. of the dock. Okay. No. It, the problem was more between trying to work with everyone and then it was getting my hands on the physical survey. And Mr. Salvini's been greatly extended out in the uh, Amherst area. So it, it's been many things, but it, it's it's happy now. Thank you. Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we can move along. Um, anything else on CONCOM? Normal. No. Okay. Master plan update. Norm. Yep. All right. Let me go back to the beginning here. Okay. Bring this slide up. All right. So slideshow. Let's go from the current slide. All right. We got a few questions that are really we can breeze right through these, no problem. We had question number 26. Do you use, let me move this. Do you use public drinking water? Yes or no? And basically two thirds do and the other one third uses wells. So the next question related to water was, if you answered yes, is the quality of your water, town public water acceptable to you? 
and 74% said yes, and 26% said no. If we were to vote today, that might change because we've had a couple of water problems come up uh, with, uh, with testing issues. But uh, that's not a bad report to right there. And then if you said no to uh, uh, question 26, would you would you be interested in uh, having public drinking water at your house? And the response was 40% said yes, and 60% said no, they're happy with their wells. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. The next question now we turn to sewers. Are you connected to the town sewer system? Uh, only 24% uh, are connected and 76% are not. Wow. And if you if you answered no, are you interested in having sewer expanded to your street? And 47% said yes and 53% said no. Wow. Okay. And of course, with this one, there's a lot of expense because uh, homeowners have to pay part of the Betterment Act. And that's the end of that presentation. Um, now we got a meeting coming up on June 1st where the public is invited uh, and it's to address the, the, the theme of the meeting is, did we hear you? It'll be a presentation on where we stand on the whole master plan project and the direction we th we're at this point in time, what we're gonna go. And it's a sanity check, did we miss anything? And we'll be breakout sessions with the public to, uh, to address that. So that's gonna be June 1st. I believe it will be at town hall. Um, so that could be a good meeting too. Other than that, if you go to the town meeting on the 16th, uh, you'll see the master plan advisory committee will have a table there. Uh, and, a, and a little handout for those that uh, are interested. And that's the master plan update. Okay, and we thank you. And you'll send me a, a write-up to go in the minutes, please. I, I will do that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the 141 Conway Road, the only thing I'm going to say is the appeal was submitted on 426. So we made it in time and it's a work in progress. It, we have, have no update. Uh, on status of that. Uh, 159 Berkshire Avenue, the planning board met with the engineer who was uh, coming up with the plan, the corrective action plan for uh, preventing the sediment from escaping from that property into the town uh, detention pond across the street, the old town beach. And two years ago, it made it all the way to Congamon. So that's, that's what that plan is about, is how to prevent that in the future. And we should hear more after the next planning board meeting. I believe he's on the docket for giving another update. So once they have that, or if I learn anything more, I'll bring it to the next meeting. The, uh, we already did 10 Island Pond Road, so that's good. Uh, the, there was an uh, email uh, pages 30 and 31, there's an email came from a resident of North Pond about the, the lake level being too high. And it was higher, it said it was higher than it was during the hurricane in 2021. And fortunately, we have all that data and not even close. It's a matter of fact, it's a foot lower. Um, it's 20, it was 224.67 feet MSL on that date, that day. Uh, the during that hurricane, it went to 225.67, so a foot higher than uh, nominal. And that's when we shut down the lake to all boating. And the trigger point, just an FYI, the trigger point for taking action on, on shutting down the lake is 225.2, so we aren't even close to that. So uh, I did explain that. You'll see in my email back to her, and uh, she came back and says, understand. So uh, it's, I think a lot of people don't realize that if you're in an area that has a relatively low pitch, you know, slope going from your land in, into the water, 
that a two inch change in elevation of the water could mean five feet <laughs> uh, change in the in your shoreline. <laughs> you know, it's very dramatic. So anyway, I, I, unless anybody has any other comments, I think we're all set. I don't know if Eric came on yet. Eric, are you on? No. I, I don't no. see him. All right. I was hoping he'd go over. Um, the next one was pages 32 through 38 with the reported illegal leaching. And I'm, I'm going to try and fill in for Eric here. Uh, illegal leaching and toxins into the lake. And, and as we've said, both Sabrina Pooler and uh, Ken Wagner, Ken came back with a, a long, a lot of information on it. And there, there is no knowledge on, on anybody's part of what would be considered toxins coming into the lake from say a septic system or something like that. We did have an, uh, uh, an algae bloom by the, uh, old, by the town beach and an E. coli uh, breakout last year where they shut the beach down. And that was, we had very low water, very high water temperature, very low water level in the lake because that's when we had the drought. And it, so there was, there was not much movement. And it was, again, it was not deemed to be anything to do with anybody flushing toilets or, or anything like that. It was uh, goose and, and whatnot. And because a lot of geese congregate at the, at the town beach when there aren't people there. As soon as people leave, they, uh, they, they come in and, as, and Karen knows very well. She's shaking her head and <laughs> it's terrible. So, uh, I mean, we see the same thing is the goose population has gone out of sight. So we, there has been nothing indicating that there's toxins coming into the lake from uh, septic systems anywhere, whether it's Mass or Connecticut. All of Mass is on sewers on that entire shoreline, South Pond, Middle Pond, uh, North Pond, around to the Connecticut line the other way. One little corner of North Pond is not done yet, uh, but we have not seen anything in North Pond at all. So this is Mike DeBay. I don't want to interrupt yeah. you, but I don't want to spend all night hearing the story of it. We the emails were in there, and okay. it, given they the, the suds or whatever they saw, the white stuff was coming down the whole lake, which I have seen in the past, not in the last year or two, but I have seen it. It's usually when the lake is extremely agitated by high winds. So the question I got is, if that's the case, or if somebody sees it again, if it's a big enough soap sud, let's call it, ring coming down the lake that covers the whole lake, you would think you'd be able to detect that fairly easily with a sample. It wouldn't be, you know, a pristine sample, but it would be obvious because to make a soap sud the, the half a mile down the lake, you got to have some Serious soap. Yes. So and, and Eric is going to provide sample bottles so we don't take it in a in a, a empty beer can or something like that. Right. <laughs> okay, so we got a plan to do that in case yes. it comes in again as a report and has yes. Sabrina do it or whoever has the sample bottles. Yes. And and uh, so we've got a couple of people that are gonna be called by um uh, Jeannie there if she sees it. And they'll go out and, and take samples of the suds and find out, is it soap or is it uh, just churning up of the lake? But it's sure, you know, it, it's, it's coming from the same place all the time, which is what's strange. It comes from uh, a point across on the Connecticut shore. So we don't know yet what it is, but the best way to find out is to, is to test it. And that's the plan. Mm -hmm. And you can't, the other part, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mike, because the other part, you can't do that. Um, you can't wait and wait and wait because then it gets diluted and the sample isn't going to mean anything. Right. I know I've seen it. I, a couple of years ago, I saw it, but it was coming from all the way down near Sunset, which is the yeah, north yeah. end of the lake. Yeah. I live on the south end of the lake. So mm -hmm. that you're talking a mile, half yeah. a mile. I mean, that's a lot of soap suds if you really think it's soap suds. 
And, and the, the one that I've seen the, the photos of and th that you have the photos of there was coming diagonally across from uh, your side, looking a little bit slight, not not due east, but kind of just a little bit north. Northeast. North yeah. Yeah. So we I think we're on top of it to go get samples. You know, if somebody sees it, we've got it in place to go get the sample and, and have it tested. Um, and let's see, we already did the cigarette butts. Uh, and then 41 and 42, we had an input about the turtles uh, crossing Berkshire Avenue at the Weir Gates. And that's always been a problem. And the, the Weir Gates are a replacement for wood. So we've had wood batter boards there for probably, they're probably there 20 years now easily. Uh, and they just rotted at, rotted in place. So <laughs> that's why we we had some ARPA funds that were uh, select board very generously let us use to replace the wood with uh, the stainless steel gates. But we still have the problem that Great Brook stays higher than the, the lake and it empties that swamp water into, into Congamond. And it's, oh, probably... It's a good quarter mile long of swamp that's between Berkshire Avenue and Sheep Pasture Road. That whole area is one big swamp now. So, uh, yeah, sorry turtles, but the we've already got water quality problems and it's just gonna get worse if, if those got opened. And then the other problem is, is it was 24 inches above the lake uh, during the, the storm back on the 23rd. So mm. that, that would have been a disaster. And right now it's about six inches above uh, Congerman, the level of Congerman. So it's still a problem. So the, the yeah, email that came in, the issue was the turtles getting squashed or killed. Yeah. I mean, we see that though on Miller Road, we see that on Iroquois Drive, we see it on Probably you probably see it up on Berkshire. I don't know. I don't live up there, so I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, that's because the turtles walk across the road and they're slow. So I mean, it's too bad for the turtles. But you know, what are we supposed to do about that? Right. I agree. So right now we're not doing anything. Uh, Sabrina and I have had discussions about it, and she agrees that you know she hates to see the turtles get squashed. Uh, I've stopped and picked them up if I see them, but uh, you know, some people just run them over. Uh, so anyway, I don't know of any solution unless somebody else has an idea. You know, opening the gates is not a good solution at all. No. So um, the invasive treatment is going to occur on Tuesday, the 23rd of May. And we do not have the map yet. They're working on getting that to us. They, they did all the... Uh, survey work on the three ponds. They're compiling the data and, and plotting it. And as soon as they plot it, he expected to have it to me by Tuesday of next week. Uh, and I've already printed the posters. And that's one thing that we uh, need to do is we've got to get those posters up by the by Friday of next week. We don't want to get them up too early because if we get a rain, windy rain or something like that, they'll get ripped down, they'll get soggy. But I'd say if we can do Friday or Saturday of next week, that would be great. So we need volunteers. Uh, we have North Pond. Paul Murphy usually takes that without any problem. I'm going to just tentatively put it down and I'll check with him uh, since he lives right there. So we have Zone 2. That was Zone 1. Zone 2 is the uh, northern part of Middle Pond and the boat ramp. And so we need somebody to do zone two. I usually do that, Dick. Okay, that was Michelle? Yep. Okay, thank you. Normal do zone three. Normal do zone three, okay. Dick, this and is Mike DeBay. I, Malcolm and I will take zones, I think it's usually, what, four five, five or six? Uh, um, South Pond, all the South Pond. That's, uh, would be, five and six would be Connecticut and Mass and South Pond, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So the base. And zone four is left, and that's uh, the southern part of 
of uh, Berkshire Ave and the and the feeder streets. I can do that, Dick. Well, okay, Mike Coombs. Mike Coombs. Yeah. Mike C. Okay. Yeah. So I will put them in the in the cauldron. Okay. Uh, I'll wait to put them in until about Wednesday or Thursday. So that um, unless you come and take them, I just don't want to leave them out there in case we get a driving rainstorm. Then they get all soggy. And you want them up by the 19th, right? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Excuse me one one second. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I just had at our CRC meeting the other um, night, just had someone mention to me that they felt there was an outbreak of milfoil in Congamon Cove on South Pond. I don't know exactly where that refers to. Do you all know where they mean? Yeah, that? and 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 they they map that. So we will know once we get the the uh, the map is in color. It shows where they're going to treat and how many acres in each area, and I hope that that shows up. Uh, by the way, just in case there are there is good milfoil and there's bad milfoil. Eurasian water milfoil looks different. Um, a lot of people will say, "Oh, well, I've got you know milfoil in my in in front of my house," and then you find out it's curly leaf pondweed or it's the other milfoil. Right. No, no, I'm aware of that. And so okay. um, I told him to grab a sample yes. put in a bucket of water and to drop it either at your house or my house. And, um, you know, it would be identified. So right. I haven't heard Perfect. back from him since I, I responded. But which yeah. one's Congamon Cove? You're so I've only been here 70 years. I don't know what Congamon Cove <laughs> no, is. No, I've only been here 55 and I don't either. <laughs> 168 in, right over the line in Connecticut. Is the is the Connecticut Cove, and then the oh, other one is Turtle Cove, which is down around the corner from, uh, uh, yeah, Rick Wylot, where he is on that point. So it's that little inlet. Okay, that's okay, Turtle so Cove. That's Turtle. I've heard it called Turtle Cove. Yeah, we call it Turtle Connecticut Cove. Cove. Yeah, okay. and that's okay. always had milfoil in it, by the way. Yeah, every year. So um, the uh, only two other quick things, Ricky's porta potty, uh, Rick uh, Goya, Goya is uh, retiring, but he merged with that, uh, I gave you the information, uh, regional restrooms. So, and he's staying on. He, you can still call him if you want, uh, you know, porta potties for your own parties or whatever. You can always call Rick and he will take care of it. Uh, and they are, they will be, we already got the first bill from uh, the regional restrooms. So it's pretty, it's going pretty good, pretty seamless. And they're already uh, cleaning them. And I haven't seen any difference in, in uh, quality of cleaning. So, uh, and the, the only other thing that I had just, it was an FYI is page 46 is the emergency house numbers. You know, that's a program that uh, is run out of the senior, with the senior citizens out of the, out of town hall. And you can sign up for it and have one of those green uh, number signs for in, in front of your house. And the fire department, I believe is still the ones putting, installing them. I, and that says, uh, I think they're $25. And they, they come put them in the ground for you. If you have a particular place, they'll put it where you want it, you know, but the idea is, is for emergency services to know where the house is when, when they're driving down the street. And uh, I, I think personally, I think it's a really great idea. So if you if you get the opportunity, you want one, you can, the in, instructions are in that last sheet that's in our package. So it's not a sales pitch for them, but it's a matter of safety. So. Does anybody have anything else? What about uh, CRC? Yeah, let's do CRC <laughs> right now since we kind of skipped over it. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, that's fine. So uh, just, just a couple super quick things um, beside what you've already addressed. We just wanted to give a big shout out to Eric. He spoke at our meeting and um, did his presentation, which is just amazing. Every year, super helpful. People love it. It just gives the scientific evidence of exactly where the health of the lakes are and um, 
you know, what, what all the hard work that you all are doing, you know, what it's providing to all of us. And so it's just so greatly appreciated by, by all of us. Um, so that was, that was awesome. And we got, wanted to give a shout out to him. And then the other piece was the concern was raised. And I went and looked today to the new owner of Tri PBJ Marina. And I don't know what it's called now, but at the launch there, um, they have a porta potty and they've got it positioned really, really, really closely to the edge of the water. Um, and then it's like kind of a drop there. So people expressed concern that if there were anything were to happen to that, somebody tipped it on purpose or by accident or a car backed into it or I don't know, whatever. Um, people were super concerned. It's very close to the lake there. Um, and then they said something about grilling too close to the lake, but I don't know what they mean by that. I didn't see a grill. I yeah, from what happened, I understand, but. and I already input Sabrina about it. I forwarded that information and it's, the grills are also right next to the waterfront. So, you know, if, if something gets tipped over, uh, just like the porta potties, you know, and, and uh, you could have people dumping coals. I don't know if they're gas grills or charcoal grills, because I, I haven't been down there to, to see. But, they uh, look like charcoal. Okay. They probably are because I don't think anybody would be supplying gas, you know, uh, in, to a grill that's used by the public. So that's, that is a problem. If they dump that stuff and it winds up in the lake, that's not good. So I, like I say, it's already, CONCOM is already aware of it. And she was going to send a letter about it. Going to contact them and send a letter reminding them that, you know, you can't have that at the water's edge. Perfect. Thank but, you. And he was very responsive, by the way, really quickly took care of the problem with that, that dock that got located uh, choking down, which is already tight, the uh, entrance to North Pond, because it was put on the wrong, the, it was put on the right side, on the eastern side of their ramp. The drawing for the Chapter 91 license has it on the left side, western side of their concrete ramp. So it really did choke down uh, trying to get into North Pond, which is already tough. So that that was taken care of the same day. <clears throat> so been been very helpful to us. Anybody uh, have anything else? One other thing from the meeting, and Michelle, I, I don't know if you were you heard it or not. There was a woman sitting next to me. She and Eric talked. She's willing to take the samples. She's also that woman, Dick, that I mentioned before, who had done a study of all the sewers on the West Suffield side. So okay. she's going to get that information to Eric as well. All right. She called me and, and uh, we did converse about that. She okay. did offer. She said she'd drive them there. She's retired, recently retired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said she would drive them, but Mike Orslock, our treasurer, said that he would collect the samples. Deb, I don't think she can collect the samples, but she no. said she would do the driving. But Mike Orslock right. um, said that he would help to collect. So, yeah, okay. we got two volunteers just. Yeah. And tie in with Eric, tie in with Eric, because Eric, because he really is yeah. the one that. Uh, yeah, Eric, Eric was there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Eric talked to both of them, as Michelle was saying. Oh, super, super. All right. Sorry, the other one didn't work out, but maybe this is more promising. <laughs> okay. Any anything else? Hey, 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 Dick, this is Mike Coombs on PP and G. Did they get permission to remove the Beaver Dam? What, what's no, the update on that? No, they have that to more? go through. They have to. Um, they. I have not seen any paperwork about removing it, and then they also have to file a, a notice of intent. Uh, they could try an RDA. Uh, I seriously doubt that an RDA would cover it and, and talking with Sabrina, she didn't think so either. But uh, we had met with the owner and CONCOM, myself, uh, there were two or three other, planning was there. We had a really nice meeting about that. And it it's not a quick process, unfortunately. Um, it, it involves DEP and CONCOM. Mm -hmm. So, and it also involves Board of Health because they have to give permission uh, to remove the beavers. And you can only do that. There's certain windows of time when you can do that. All right. Okay. Anything else on anybody? Yeah, I got one item, uh, Dick. Anything to report from the uh, 141 mediation meeting last Friday? No, no. Nothing to report? No. Okay. Anything else, anybody? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll take a motion. motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Norm. 
Okay. And a second. Seconded by Mike. Mike D. Yeah, Mike D. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Unanimous. Night all.